for ABN Newswire. I'm back at the Bowlers Club of New South Wales for the April Symposium Resources Roadshow where AXS listed companies are really growing to benefit from the opportunity to present directly to their existing shareholders and importantly potential investors in a somewhat informal setting. First Australian Resources Limited is a West Australian company engaged in exploring for and the production of oil and gas particularly in offshore West Africa. Presenting at today's roadshow was Chairman Michael Evans. He joins me now. Michael, welcome to ABN Newswire. Thank you, Brian. Let's talk uh, offshore West Africa, starting with Senegal. You want to drill an exploration well. What sort of size and how big is the resource? Okay, the target, the, uh, West Africa is, is hosts very large oil accumulations. Uh, we have uh, three dimensionally seismic defined prospects ranging in size from 200 million barrels all the way up to in excess of a billion barrels. So, so big resources? Very big, very big, uh, uh, very high potential. And what stage in the process are you at now? Okay, we have uh, shot a three-dimensional seismic program over our lease areas there, uh, covering some 2,000 square kilometres at a price of 14 million US dollars. And we have uh, drill-ready prospects. We're ready to go, Brian. So at what stage do you see the first barrels emerging? Okay, uh, Time deep, frame. deep water drilling uh, does involve long lead times. Sure. Uh, so we're not going to suggest you can just pluck a rig out of the middle, middle of the air and, and get cracking and into production. However, uh, we would anticipate um, there would be some, there, the first deep water well will be drilled in offshore Senegal this year. Now it won't be on our license, but it will be adjacent to our license. And that's a significant event. Not cheap setting up oil rigs. No, the, the type the of, cost? okay, the type of rig that's required to um, drill these deep water wells um, will we'll run at a cost of about a million dollars a day. So if you're um, taking 60 days to drill a well, it'll cost you $60 million. Significant money. Very large money, and it's uh, only for people with deep pockets. <laughs> where, where do your deep pockets come from? Uh, that's a good question, Brian, because our deep pockets are going to come from someone we introduce into the project. Mm -hmm. So we are currently marketing the opportunity to a number of very substantial oil and gas companies around the globe and we're receiving some, some very encouraging response from them. And you can't say anything more than that? We cannot. It, the process of finding a major to put his hand in his pocket and come up with $60 million, as you can imagine, requires a lot of science. Uh, the, these large organisations have a lot of due diligence to do, sure. and they'll take anywhere from four to six months to complete that style of, of assessment. Senegal's not your only location of operation. What else are you looking at? It's not. Now, recently uh, we picked up three blocks to the south in a country called Guinea-Bissau. And so that actually makes us, uh, in this part of West Africa, the largest uh, offshore license holder in this, this section between Senegal and Guinea-Bissau. And certainly in terms of ASX companies, definitely the largest acreage holder in what is becoming a very, very hot play. How hot? Very hot. Um, you would have seen recently in the news the ASX uh, put their hand up and stopped um, a, a chap by the name of Frank Timmis from going ahead with um, two Liberian assets that um, were valued um, at $500 million. Um, and that was on the back of a discovery in Sierra Leone by Anadarko last year. Um, you were seeing a, a land rush taking place along the margin of, um, of West Africa. And if you compare apples for apples, uh, we believe our acreage is actually better than that which was going to be used uh, in that particular promotion. The subtext here is uh, another oil boom, but off West Africa this time. Well, West Africa is the place to uh, look for big oil. If I said to you, um, who were the, the, the best oil explorers in the world in the last two years, I'd hope you'd come back to me and you'd say, Petrobras off the coast of Brazil and Tullo uh, off the coast of West Africa. Uh, Tullo um, leases actually run all the way down to our blocks in Senegal and uh, their discovery offshore Ghana is in the order of magnitude of approaching two billion barrels. So we're talking about very large targets here. West African countries are not often the most stable politically. How are you dealing with that? Senegal itself is very stable. It's actually referred to as the Switzerland of West Africa. It's where everyone goes to to sort out their differences in the neighbouring countries. They've been a functioning democracy since 1964, and, and it's um, a great country to do business in. Now, on the other hand, Guinea-Bissau to the south uh, has a troubled chequered history. I don't know whether it's the Portuguese factor. Uh, Senegal's a French colony, 
However, uh, they sort their differences out um, by meeting in Dakar to the north. So, uh, you know, there are advantages in, in some regard in dealing with countries that have, have issues. And one is, of course, you can get better trading terms. Uh, the, you, you are actively engaged with the government of uh, Guinea-Bissau now, aren't you? We are. We, we, we obviously have to talk to governments, although our interface is primarily with the national oil countries, uh, companies, I should say, of those countries, who in turn deal with the ministries and the presidents. Would they be uh, where you're looking for M&A possibilities? Uh, there's all sorts of possibilities. You know, uh, FAR has to be looked at where it is at this space in time. And the best analogy I can draw for you is a company called Hardman Resources, uh, a stock that put West Africa on the map. It's been, it started out as a $10 million company. It ended up being taken over by Tullo for $1.5 billion. Wow. We are seeking to, to duplicate that sort of a story. Of, of course, there's, there's a lot of risks involved, but the rewards are very, very high. You've sold your China interests. Yes. Sold we, the cash flow a bit? It certainly did, Brian. Uh, yeah, we did that at the time of the GFC. Uh, everybody took a big deep breath when that happened, and I'm sure we weren't, it wasn't unique to FAR. No, it did. Uh, we were sitting there on an asset that was taking far too long to develop, and we could take that pool of money and obviously put it to greater leverage for us in West Africa, where the pools of oil are substantially larger than where we were offshore China. So you've got some cash in the bank to kick all this off? Uh, for our market cap, which is $39 million, we have cash at bank of $11 million, plus receivables on the China sale of a further $6 million. And in our farm out that we're seeking uh, to bring in a major into Senegal, we're actually asking for our seismic spend back. So we're expecting further money to come into the kitty. So this company is extremely healthy. What's the very next step for uh, First Australian Resources? Okay, the very next step for us is actually to find a partner to come in and drill the well for us offshore Senegal. But concurrently with that offshore Guinea-Bissau, we actually are sitting on a discovery there called the Sinapa Oil Discovery. It's 240 million barrels of oil in place. We would like to shoot 3D seismic around that and bring that to a status where we can go forward to a development and possibly seeing first oil as soon as 2014. Having said that, what sort of benefit do you derive from talking to potential investors at events like this? Well, obviously, it's a, um, being a publicly listed company, we need uh, people to purchase our shares. Uh, we need to create awareness for that to happen. And, uh, you know, the West African story is not very well told. There are very few Australian companies playing that, that patch, although in the last month there have been three new ASX entrants, so they're waking up. And of course, you're uh, ploughing the field. We certainly are. What one aspect of your business would you like to reinforce to potential investors? One key message? OK, I think we're looking for oil in the right places. Um, adjacent to our leasehold in uh, Senegal, for example, you see the presence of both Petrobras and Tullo, the best explorers in recent times anywhere and they're looking for very, very large pools of oil. And I'd like to get that message across that as a small company, we're playing out of our weight division, but the prize is enormous. Michael Evans, Chairman, Director, First Australian Resources Limited, thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Brian. This is Brian Carlton for ABN Newswire.